Primacy of efficiency over distribution in analyzing private law. We explain that economists are experts on two policy values, efficiency and distribution. The stakes in most legal disputes have monetary value. Deciding a legal dispute almost always involves allocating the stakes between the parties. The decision about how much of the stakes each party gets creates incentives for future behavior, not just for the parties to this dispute, but also for everyone who is similarly situated. In this book, we use these incentive effects to make predictions about the consequences of legal decisions, policies, rules, and institutions. In evaluating these consequences, we will focus on efficiency rather than distribution. Why? By making a rule, the division of the stakes in a legal dispute affects all similarly situated people. If a plaintiff in a case is a consumer of a particular good, an investor in a particular stock, or the driver of a car, then a decision for the plaintiff may benefit everyone who consumes this good, invests in this stock, or drives a car. Most proponents of income redistribution, however, have something else in mind. Instead of contemplating distribution to consumers, investors, or drivers, advocates of income redistribution usually target social groups, such as the poor, women, or minorities. Some people passionately advocate government redistribution of income by class, gender, or race for the sake of social justice. A possible way to pursue redistribution is through private law, the law of property, contracts, and torts. According to this philosophy, courts should interpret or make private laws to redistribute income to deserving groups of people. For example, if consumers are poorer on average than investors, then courts should interpret liability rules to favor consumers and disfavor corporations. This book rejects the redistributive approach to private law. Pursuing redistributive goals is an exceptional use of private law that special circumstances may justify, but that ought not to be the usual use of private law. Here's why. Like the rest of the population, economists disagree among themselves about redistributive ends. However, economists generally agree about redistributive means. By avoiding waste, efficient redistribution event uh, benefits everyone relative to inefficient redistribution. By avoiding waste, efficient redistribution also builds support for redistribution. For example, people are more likely to donate to a charitable organization that efficiently redistributes income than to one that spends most of its revenue on administration. A piquant example will help you to appreciate the advantages of efficient redistribution. Assume that a, a desert uh, contains two oases, one of which has ice cream and the other has none. The advocates of social justice who favor redistribution obtain control over the state and declare that the first oasis should share its ice cream with the second oasis. In response, the first oasis fills a large bowl with ice cream and sends a youth running across the desert carrying the bowl to the second oasis. The hot sun melts some of the ice cream. So the first oasis gives up more ice cream than the second oasis receives. The melted ice cream represents the cost of redistribution. People who disagree vehemently about how much ice cream the first oasis should give to the second oasis may agree that a fast runner should transport it. Also, they might agree to choose an honest runner who will not eat the ice cream along the route. Many economists believe that progressive taxation and social welfare programs, the tax and transfer system, as it is usually called, can accomplish redistributive goals in modern states more efficiently than can be done through modifying or reshuffling private legal rights. There are several reasons why reshuffling private legal rights resembles giving the ice cream to a slow runner. First, the income tax precisely targets inequality. 
Whereas redistribution, my private legal rights relies on fluid advantages. To illustrate, assume that courts interpret a law to favor consumers over corporations in order to redistribute income from rich to poor. Superscript 11, which reads, Courts might always find in favor of the individual consumer when he or she sues a corporation regarding liability for harms arising in the use of the corporation's product. Back to the text. Consumers and investors imperfectly correspond to poor and rich. Uh, consumers of Ferrari automobiles, uh, skiing, vacations, and the opera tend to be relatively rich. Many small businesses are organized as corporations. Furthermore, the members of unions with good pension plans own the stocks of large companies. By taxing income progressively, law distinguishes more precisely between rich and poor than by taking the indirect approach of targeting consumers and investors. Second, the distributive effects of reshuffling private rights are hard to predict. And to illustrate, the courts cannot be confident that holding a corporation liable to its consumers will reduce the wealth of its stockholders. Perhaps the corporation will pass on its higher costs to consumers in the form of higher prices, in which case the court's holding will redistribute costs from some consumers to other consumers. Third, the transaction costs of redistribution through private legal rights are typically high. To illustrate, a plaintiff's attorney working on a contingency fee in the United States routinely charges, uh, charges one-third of the judgment. If the defendant's attorney collects a similar amount in hourly fees, then attorneys for the two sides will absorb two-thirds of the stakes in dispute. The tax and transfer system is more efficient. Besides these three reasons, there is the fourth. Redistribution by private law distorts the economy more than progressive taxation does. In general, relying on broad-based taxes rather than narrowly focused laws reduces the distorting effects of redistributive policies. For example, assume that a law to benefit consumers of tomatoes causes a decline in the return enjoyed by investors in tomato farms. Investors will respond by withdrawing funds from tomato farms and investing in other businesses. Consequently, the supply of tomatoes will be too small and consumers will pay too high a price for them. This law distorts the market for tomatoes. For these reasons and more, economists who favor redistribution and economists who oppose it can agree that private legal rights are usually the wrong way to pursue redistributive justice. Unfortunately, lawyers without training in economics seldom appreciate these facts. We have presented several reasons against basing private law on redistributive goals. Specifically, we discussed imprecise targeting, unpredictable consequences, high transaction costs, and distortions in incentives. For these reasons, the general principle of private law cannot rest on income redistribution. In special circumstances, however, a private law can redistribute relatively efficiently, such as a well-designed law giving crippled people the right to sue employers for not providing wheelchair access to the workplace. Web note 1.1. Besides efficiency, what other policy values should matter to making law and applying it? In Fairness versus Welfare, 2002, Lewis Kaplow and Stephen Chabelle of the Harvard Law School say none. Others disagree. See Chris Sen 
Chirico deconstructing the new efficiency rationale. 86 uh, Cornell Law Review, 1005, year 2001. And uh, Daniel Farber, what, if anything, can economists say about equity? Uh, 101 Michigan Law Review, 1791, year 2003. There is a more complete discussion of this literature under Chapter 1 at the website for this book and links to additional sites of interest.